uh, for a long time, I was an actor. And then for a long time, I tried to be an actor, but I kind of wasn't an actor, so then I was a writer. Now I'm kind of an actor and a writer. And I have an opportunity to take those two things and kind of push them together and uh, make you a cake. Uh, this, is a, this is a book that I wrote called The Happiest Days of Our Lives. Um, it is uh, about uh, growing up in the 70s and coming of age in the 80s as a member of the geek subculture of Generation X. This full of stories about uh, how video games and science fiction and uh, Tron and E.T. and, and uh, what you said, um, uh, I'm, I'm not fighting uh, how, 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 how all of that helped make me into the person that I am today. And there is a story in this book that is about a very particular uh, portion of the geek subculture uh, that I'm really, really proud uh, to call myself a member of that I think sort of uh, is, is misunderstood even by people who are misunderstood by uh, the normal people in the world. There, you find them in San Diego. They're the ones that are pissed off that we're here. Uh, but uh, this is a story uh, about uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. This is a story specifically about the very first time I saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Some of you may have just heard of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It is a musical. As such, to properly tell this story, I require musical accompaniment. Colin Storm! This story is called When You Dressed Up Shark and You Felt Alright. It started out as a one-paragraph intro to how much I didn't want MTV to remake the Rocky Horror Picture Show and turn it into Twilight. I know, right? All right, now I know you all just suddenly conceived Rage Babies. It's okay. We're going to turn them into happy butterflies that shoot out our mouths. Speaking of happy butterflies, we wanted to mention there's going to be a brief intermission after Will has done his little thing. <laughs> we'll have merchandise for sale, and then we're many people will be selling things back there. And also, uh, around the corner in the parking lot over here, uh, Molly Lewis will be giving a brief ninja concert, which, which I believe you're calling Molly Stop. I believe you're calling it Molly Stop. <laughs> yeah, the O's are all zeros. It's very important. Uh, so this story started out as a one paragraph intro to this rant about uh, how much I didn't want that to happen. But after just a couple of minutes, it was much more fun to tell this story. So uh, come along with me, everybody. <clears throat> a few days after my 16th birthday, I lost my Rocky Horror virginity. <laughs> It happened in a shitty little duplex theater in Van Nuys, California. I had wanted to see Rocky since I was 10 or 11, and my mom drove the two of us past a marquee advertising a midnight showing every Saturday. My parents couldn't or wouldn't tell me what it was about. My memory is hazy on that specific detail. But anything that happened at midnight on a Saturday sounded great to me. The creepy lettering and the word horror in the title only served to increase my anticipation. Settle it. A week or so after my birthday, my best friend Darren and I were at a place on Van Nuys Boulevard in the valley called Cafe 50s. 
These 1950s themed cafes were everywhere in the 80s. Some links stand by me in Back to the Future for their popularity. But this particular one was my favorite. Though I'd never actually been to a diner in the 50s, this one felt the most authentic, which means that it copied what I'd seen in movies better than anywhere else. And it had Del Shannon's Runaway on the jukebox. I'm a walking in the rain, just a falling and I'll be the pain. Wishing you would hear me, to end this misery and I wonder. Darren and I forged ourselves on patty melts and chocolate shakes and vanilla cokes and extra fries with ranch dressing while we talked about all of the things that seemed important after you discovered girls. Like, you know, how to talk to one. Thereby instantly convincing her to take an unforgettable trip with you to second base for 16 seconds of commitment-free passion. We argued about the time travel paradoxes in Back to the Future. We confirmed that quoting Monty Python to the 24-year-old waitress is not the best way to get a stand-up double when you're 16. Or ever. And we admitted that Michael Keaton was a far better Batman than we had been prepared to give him credit for. Oh, hindsight, how you make Michael Keaton the greatest Batman of all time. <laughs> In other words, it was a Saturday night like any And as midnight and the restaurant's closing drew near, our attention shifted to the most important of teenage activities, doing anything but going home. <laughs> hey, Darren asked. Have you ever seen Rocky? Oh, God, I hate that movie, I said. It's so stupid, and the sequels are even worse. It's like, okay, we know he's going to struggle a lot, and then he's going to win at the end, and there's no surprises in it. No, no! <laughs> I mean Rocky Horror, he said. Oh? No. I have not. I've always wanted to. It's playing across the street at midnight. We should go.